Hey yo, welcome to Astronaut. Today we're talking about Compton scattering. I feel like an astronaut in a what you know about rolling down in the deep. Compton scattering is when a high frequency photon collides with a charged particle, like an electron, and transfers some of its energy over to the particle. Because the light has lost some of its energy, it has a lower frequency and larger wavelength than before. We assume both the photon and the electron are relativistic particles. They scatter off in different directions at different angles. Let's assign the incoming photon energy E and momentum P. Before collision, the electron has an energy E0 and momentum of zero since it is initially at rest. After collision, let's assign the electron a new energy E sub E and momentum P sub E. The photon's parameters after collision will also change. Let's give it E prime and P prime. If we plot the photon's wavelength on a graph, we'll notice that its intensity peaks at a certain wavelength, as indicated by the purple curve. When it scatters, there will be a shift in the wavelength, with another peak at a wavelength higher than the first. The amount that this wavelength shifts is dependent on our scattering angle theta. When theta increases, the change in wavelength increases. The standard form of the Compton equation is the change in wavelength is equal to the Compton wavelength times 1 minus cosine theta. But how do we get there from this scenario? We will use two important conservation rules, the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. That, and a whole lot of algebra. Let's start with the conservation of energy. The energy of a photon and the electron before collision is equivalent to the energy of the photon and electron after collision. We can substitute what we know about the electron's initial energy in for E0. Now let's arrange everything so that we isolate the photon's final energy on the right-hand side of our equation and square everything. Now, some of these algebraic manipulations may seem arbitrary. Remember, we are focused on rearranging our equation in such a way so that we eventually derive the Compton equation. If we divide everything by c squared, we will be able to plug in the equation p equals e over c. In this case, we have p sub e. With some algebraic manipulation, we get e minus e prime divided by c squared plus 2m naught times e minus e prime equals p sub e squared. We can multiply the second term by c over c to get an expression that now resembles our p equals e over c equation. Now, we turn to the conservation of momentum, which implies the momentum of the photon and the electron before collision is equal to the momentum of the photon and the electron after collision. We haven't yet focused on how the momentum is a vector, meaning it has both a value and a direction, but that becomes important here. First off, we can eliminate the initial momentum of the electron because in our scenario, we assume the electron starts at rest and its momentum is zero. We are left with our remaining three momentum vectors. If we square both sides, we can rewrite our vectors as scalar quantities. This is essentially the law of cosines. We can combine our two equations. We now get an equation in terms of momentum. If we FOIL out the first term, we will have a p squared and a p prime squared on both sides of the equation, so we can cross these out. All the terms left have a coefficient of 2, so we can also divide the entire equation by 2. Let's put both terms with a p times p prime on the same side of the equation. We can now pull this term out to get p p prime times 1 minus cosine theta. We divide both sides of our equation by p p prime and by m naught c. This gets us 1 over p prime minus 1 over p on the left-hand side of our equation, which is a convenient place to substitute another formula we know about momentum. Momentum is equal to Planck's constant over wavelength. We substitute the inverse of this into our equation to rewrite momenta in terms of wavelengths. Lambda prime minus lambda is just the change in wavelength. H over the electron's mass, times c, is what we call the Compton wavelength, which is equal to about 2.43 picometers. And there we go. This is the standard form of the Compton equation. Thanks for watching, and as always, ponder, wander, and go right in the stars.
feel like 